So I guess we got to address the latest Trump attack, which is apparently where he was on stage with Tucker Carlson in a recent event and called out Liz Cheney's war hawk behavior, which rightly so she is. Rightly so she is a war lusting neocon. She is the witch of all war. She is just her and her father just absolutely catastrophically damaged the, uh, the sacred seed, the the fabric of uh, military personnel, sending them overseas on these dangerous missions for their own per, uh, for their own wishes and privileges, but yet are so cowardly to actually engage in warfare themselves or even bother to understand why they're doing warfare and come to a peace resolution. And Trump was right to criticize it, but in typical fashion, they tried to oust him by taking certain sound bites of it which you're about to see here. But here's the full video of the situation. And I'm going to show you the part where the media stopped and reported on it and the rest of the story here. And Cheney was so, th he said, I really want to thank you. He said, now I'm so glad that I actually endorsed you. It's amazing, but that you would do this. And I didn't speak to him about it, but then, you know, go a couple of years forward or go now. And I don't blame him for sticking with his daughter, but his daughter is a very dumb individual, very dumb. <laughs> She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are... So that's when the media stopped and went, oh my God, how crazy that is that Trump is going to engage warfare on Liz Cheney and wants her assassinated. And everybody freaked out. Everybody thought how crazy that was for that little sound bite. But again, taking context of the whole situation as we're about to show the rest of the video, that this is highlighting the absolute evil worse of Liz Cheney and the fact that she is a warmonger, she is a war hawk, and she's doing this dumbfully on the fact that she's sacrificing so many lives of so many people for her, for what? For, for campaign endorsements, for the military industrial complex, for who is exactly benefiting from this? She keeps railing about how we need to continue support of Ukraine, how we need continued support of Israel, how we need to, you know, bomb the crap out of Iran. Same with her father. And her father did it because his own company was involved in, flourishing his expenses but what is Liz Cheney's purpose in this other than the fact that she is a evil sinister war hawk doing this on complacency for the military industrial complex that sponsors her campaign that donates to her uh position and allows her to continue on this flourish career she has trained on her face you know they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying oh gee will Let's uh, send, uh, let's send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. And I used to have, I'd, I'd have meetings with a lot of people and she always wanted to go to war with people. And Cheney was so, th he So that was the whole conversation of it, was the fact that Trump was accusing her of her warlock behavior, of being a warmonger, the fact that she, is advancing these dangerous policies that afflicts everybody, how she's sacrificing people, how she has blood all over herself in the most stupidest way possible. And Trump is associating to that in the fact that, well, imagine if you were in the front lines. Imagine if someone put you in the front lines of war, Liz Cheney. How would you react? How would you react being in the middle of a war that you were not told properly how to how to deal with and why exactly we're in this war to begin with. Why exactly are we bombarding Iraq that had nothing to do with us? Why exactly did we spend 20 years in Afghanistan, even though Osama bin Laden was killed, what, 10 years ago? And we were still there? Why exactly no one has told these soldiers why exactly they're continuously dying for these endless wars to these regimes that, that has nothing to do with anything about American security whatsoever? Well, maybe not take his word from it. By the way, here's 
Here's some of the articles that they wrote in a couple publications, like AP. Trump says Liz Cheney may not be such a war hawk if she had rifles shooting at her. That couldn't could not be more false than what he said there. CNN. Tr- Trump says war hawk Liz Cheney should be fired upon an escalation of violent rhetoric against his opponents. Again, that's not the point of the conversation. PBS. Trump says Liz Cheney should be should not be such a war hawk if she had rifles shooting at her. They're all just making fabricated lies. 19th news. Trump suggests Liz Cheney should be shot. No. They're they're rearranging the sound bites to again use it as an attack on Trump and not the fact that we have war hawks and neo uh neo uh, conservative criminals occupying the Kamala Harris base of her campaign. You have Dick Cheney endorsing her for God's sakes. Dick Cheney who should be locked up in captivity for the heinous acts he's done. So better to take the word off of, you know, someone who's actually been in combat, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, to explain this better. President Trump was absolutely right when he said that Dick and Liz Cheney are always eager to go and waste the precious lives of our brave men and women in uniform, sending them off to go fight in stupid military adventures. And yet they themselves are too cowardly to put themselves in a position where the enemy's guns are pointed at them with their lives at risk. So instead they sit and hide in their ivory towers uh, without hesitation, sending others into harm's way. So President Trump speaking this truth is not a threat to anyone. It's the truth that voters need to know before this election is over. Listen to Trump say it in his own words and make your mind up for yourself. But the reason she couldn't stand me is that she always wanted to go to war with people. I don't want to go to war. She wanted to go. She wanted to stay in Syria. I took him out. She wanted to stay in Iraq. I took him out. I mean, if it were up to her, we'd we'd be in 50 different countries. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, Will, let's uh, send, uh, send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. And I used to have... So what Trump is addressing here, if you listen to the actual context and not just whatever mainstream garbage they try to piddle to you. The whole context of it is that because of her warlock behavior, but because of the fact that she sits behind a desk and actively engages in unlawful, unjustable, endless warfare on countries that should not be in context with any sort of militarized troops, the fact that we're, you know, engaged in Syria, the fact that we're, arming, you know, in Yemen, doing uh, horrific stuff there. The fact that we're aiding genocide right now in Gaza and Lebanon. The fact that we're engaging with Ukraine to attack Russia. All this this stuff, including even Latin America. Imagine Liz Cheney herself in the front lines of these wars. Imagine uh, Lindsey Graham who's also another neocon warlock establishment shill, bloodthirsty monger like himself that goes on mainstream media, talks about, well, we need to go over there. We need to fight. We need to do this for the best of America. Imagine him on the front lines. Imagine. Imagine people like that being on the front lines of war and seeing what war is actually about, how catastrophic it is, how there is no winners and losers, how it's not a game. It's actually survival. And that's what people are trying to do. They're trying to survive. And that's what Trump is at least pledging to do. That's at least what Trump is trying to do. And I give credit to that. I give credit to the fact that you have someone who's actively becoming president who's willing to at least have the engagement of peace, have the engagement of having peace negotiations, Shaking the hands of Kim Jong-un, having conversations with Putin. I don't care how you feel about him or or Kim Jong-un or any other country. The fact that we're negotiating and talking and having rational conversations like adults, that's that's a miracle mile compared to the last how many administrations. 
the fact that the last one, Barack Obama, took two wars to seven. What, is, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? So then this leads me to this, and this is kind of the reason why I want to bring this video up. Uh, Glenn Greenwell pointed this out, and Glenn Greenwell puts it perfectly when he says that pro-Kamala neocons got upset at Trump's cr uh, correct critique of Liz Cheney and neocons because they don't know it applies to them and is shameful. Watch Lee Fang and Matt Taibbi, who's on the right here. This is at an event, uh, I think a press freedom, freedom event or something. Asked two standard New York Times neocons, Brett Stevens and Jamie R uh, Kirschnick, why they f never fought in all the wars they cheered. Good point. And this is something that I address even currently to Zionist trolls that capsulate social media and attack people like me saying that I'm anti-Semitic. I, I, I challenge that offer by saying, hey, if you think that Israel is more important than anything that's going on here, then why aren't you fighting over there? Why aren't you taking your boots on the ground and fight those wars? If you're so concerned about that or you're so more concerned about Ukraine than people sleeping on the streets here in Canada or the United States or wherever you're from, then by all means, go over there. Best of luck to you. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong that this war is not a genocide. Prove me wrong by going over there and fighting it yourself. Because majority of us are sick and tired of it. Majority of us are sick and tired of having our tax dollars stolen from us to aid these wars, to steal for the military industrial complex and gain squashed in the mean process by in high inflation, by the cost of living, how we have to sacrifice ourselves for a war that we didn't ask for. So listen to the, the response here um, by these two neocons of the New York Times writers and what Lee Fong and, and Matt Taibbi had to say about it. This country has an all-volunteer all military. There's no draft. People join the military and they're proud of their service. Yeah, you know and that, that kind is? of argument, that kind of argument that's, is really that's because, low. Yeah, because these people choose to do what they're doing. We don't have a draft. They so choose to do choose, what they're doing because they have no economic choice. Well, then that's another debate, Matt. That's another debate. We're not that's, an, that's another debate. That's another debate. That's another debate. That's actually accurate, but that's, that's another time. That's another time. And let me tell you, the reason we don't have a draft, even though probably more likely we're going to at this point because of how many wars we're in, the fact that they've, you know, highlighted and, and you know, speculated on the idea that maybe we should draft people into engaging these wars because we, we, we don't have control on what countries we're invading at this point. We're just invading all over the globe that we don't even know where we are at this point. The fact that there is no draft is because the fact that if there was a draft, there would be a revolt. There would be people uprising against that. The same way there was a draft earlier in Vietnam that people revolted against, that people hid away from, that people retaliated against the mandate that the government told them that they had to go and sacrifice their lives for an unjust war that didn't actually protect anybody, only the manufacturers of weaponry, only the military contractors themselves, only the global neocons that profit off of death and disparity, places like BlackRock, where they're only caring about is their investments, where they only care about is the fact that now they're selling off farmland in Ukraine during a war zone. How the fact that they're blowing up Gaza to sell off the real estate near the beaches. How they want to steal natural resources out of Afghanistan and Syria. How they want to blow up a pipeline so that the United States can export our natural gas to Europe and not Russia. How th This is all a business scam from the get-go. This is all bankers' wars. And even military contractors even know about this because one of them, uh, General Milley, who was at a forum, and I wish I had the video to show it, um, was at an event where he congratulated bankers for their service. I kid you not, not the troops that were engaging in warfare, not the troops that are actually fighting and doing the dirty work, but he thanked the bankers. He thanked the bankers for their war, for the sacrifices they made 
putting our money investing into that war to go kill one another. Yes, yeah, such hardship that bankers had to deal with. Unbelievable. Coming up to November 11th. How, how, how disgusting that is. And Matt Taibbi made that excellent point about the fact that economically they have no choice. And that's how they, how they did the wraparound. Well, we can't draft these people, but we can make it so economically unfavorable for these people that they had no choice but to enlist. And that was what the whole Michael Moore documentary showed us. Fahrenheit 9-11. Was that a lot of these, you know, recruiting stations, you didn't see them in Malibu. You don't see them in the Hamptons. You don't see them in Beverly Hills. They're not picking up celebrity kids, telling them they need to draft. No, they're going to the Walmart in Michigan. They're going to some, you know, <laughs> outskirts of Alabama to pick up the disenfranchised people because if they're gone off the earth, then ah, forget it. We don't have to care about them. And that's sick. That's diabolical. Debating that. Why aren't you fighting, Jamie? I'm too old at this point. Are you? Oh, <laughs> you're not. I'm think. 40 years old. That, you've changed, you, you know, not that long ago, although... 40 years old. <laughs> I'm too old at this point to fight in a war. I'm 40 years old. Well, considering the average war uh, military personnel in Ukraine right now is about 50, I believe 50 or 55 at this point, because they killed off all the young people. So the fact that it's at 50, 55, you're, you're right, right at the age. <laughs> you're one of the young ones. They will definitely take your ass to war. And that's what they're doing in Ukraine right now. They're dragging people, long lost uh, men and women uh, who are age capable of fighting the war and dragging them to the front lines <laughs> to sacrifice for this unjustable war. And the fact that they're trying to cover it up, they're trying to silence journalists. That's why Julian Assange was imprisoned for many, many years and tortured. Because, as he always states, the point of these wars are continuous. It's not to justify any means of resolution or security reasons. It's continuous war for business. Because we made a lucrative business off killing each other. And if we, if we stop killing each other, if we stop the terror, then we can't have a war on terror. We can't have businesses on terror. We can't exploit people and, and restrict their rights. A little bit of while, a little while ago, you were asked by the AP at a pro Iraq war rally that you organized. When I was in college. Would you go serve? Uh, you said I can't serve right up. now. I'm in, I'm in college oh, now on. because you're too old. Okay. You won't serve. I mean, come on, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a civilian controlled military, so I don't know who you expect to be making calling the shots here. Look, I, I'm, I'm a civilian. I'm an American I citizen. Was I have just out. as much a right as anyone else in this room to offer their opinions on foreign policy. Thank you. It sounds like you guys want a militarily controlled government. No, I, I just want some decides. consistency, some skin in the game. I, I remember four years so ago only seeing... people who serve seeing, in the military no, 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 can, listen, can have an can, opinion can, can, on here, foreign policy? Can I say something? Four years ago, we saw academics and NGO liberals encouraging young people to go out and riot and commit violent crime knowing that they wouldn't be impacted. It was young people who would get arrest records who could ruin their lives. I mean, that disgusted me to see, that, see people urging others to be in harm's way. It's the same dynamic here. If you feel so strongly about war, about fighting these enemies abroad, I mean, I don't think it's that much for so, Matt so or others to ask for, for putting some skin in the game. And you're not that old. In Ukraine, we're not, they're now, <laughs> you're, they're now you look relying great, on... They're trying to tell you look really <laughs> excellent. Look at the people fighting in Ukraine now. They're forcing conscripts who are in their late 40s and 50s to fight in the trenches. They're fighting a war of their survival. Well, I'm Lee. just saying, you're not, you're not too old. You, you can okay. serve. Sorry, can, okay. I, can I just say, I think... So, that's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> like, why aren't you fighting the war? Why aren't you, you know, putting skin in the game? If this is so important and this is so vital, in which your reporting decimates everything else to always follow that narrative then why aren't you doing yourself why aren't you fighting your own battles as as the as the saying goes why aren't you you know lacing up your own boots you know put yourself on your own two feet if you care so much about and that's what i'd say about you know even funding the war you know why is it my tax dollars paying for this war why not start a GoFundMe? see if people care about donating to ukraine 
donating to Israel, donating to the genocide. Maybe that should be that that should be the case. That should be the case. You know, instead of having GoFundMe's to pay for health care, education, uh, put a roof over someone's head, maybe the tax dollars pay for that and then GoFundMe is used for war funds. So you can have a donation, you can have a drive, and then you have to actually encourage people to understand that uh, we got to go and fight over there because it's for humanity and such. You know, then you have to come up with a convincing argument, which is harder to do now. It's really hard to do now, and that's why they're losing people in recruitments, and that's why they're bringing more immigrants from foreign countries, illegal immigrants, into America to fight these battles, which is not really a good idea in in the long shot. I mean, you're getting people from war-torn countries that we invaded, we destroyed, we overthrew. They came over here to seek better life, and then you drag them into that same service, that same organization that overthrew their homeland. How do you think that's going to work? How do you think that's going to turn out? But... That's incredible that you got two idiot New York Times writers that are just so completely just not understanding of the whole situation and the fact that, you know, they're going to try and do everything to defend people like Liz Cheney because, God forbid, Trump made an accurate point and then made uh, made criticism of the fact that, well, what if Liz Cheney was at the forefront, you know, we're sending our best and brightest of military personnel, both men and women, overseas to do this onslaught slaughter of other people. Their people are getting killed. Their, uh, you know, people within the United States are getting killed. So what exactly is the outcome of this? You know, it's like that old song from the 70s. War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. And then you don't hear those songs ever again. I like to know when Taylor Swift will release an anti-war album. Or if Taylor Swift even knows about the wars, period. Because, you know, she's read up on things, right? She's read up on things. That's why she fully endorses Kamala Harris. Just on the fact that a woman can't wreck women's rights. Apparently that's the argument. I don't know. That just seems crazy. But it can't just a celebrity that much because, I mean, she is on the road. She is just a singer who goes on to shows periodically. So I can't be too harsh on that as opposed to someone that should know better. Like these two knucklehead New York Times uh, writers. I think that's, is that Barry Weiss in the middle there moderating this? I don't know. But, <laughs> um, but yeah. That's that's the standing argument, and that's the argument, I would say, to also the Zionists that support the genocide. You know, you care that much about this situation. You think that we need to sacrifice everything, including uh, prisoning college students that don't want to partake in this war, that don't want their money. The fact that you're creating laws to ban people from not supporting Israel, which is absolutely crazy that we have to that they have to create laws to force people to support a foreign country that really doesn't have anything to do with us. But if, 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 if all, if all that's, you know, on your side and you want to sacrifice everything else going on in the world, you don't want to acknowledge the homeless epidemic. You don't want to mention, uh, inflation. This is all you care about. Then go over there. Be my guest. Best of luck to you. Try to prove me wrong. Because maybe my knucklehead ass that just wants peace and understands that war is a racket, war is disgusting. Uh, the fact that, you know, past 20, almost 30 years, even more so, has been nothing but catastrophic lies to sacrifice the many, to flourish the few. Very, very few. Uh, makes me understand that this is all just scams. That all these are just scams. These are all cultivized. These are all uh, manufactured to keep us complacent in war and, pro and propaganda and paranoia that we slaughter each other. 
in these endless warfare regimes. And then the people that screamed about the loudest for war, like Liz Cheney, uh, get to profit off the fact that we can, you know, salvage and capitalize what's left of the damage. Seems fairly simple. 